Good morning lovely souls. How are you all today? Are you well? <laughs> Does it feel like Groundhog Day? Um, yes, I'm continuing from where I left off the other day with my seed saving video. <clears throat> so, hmm, it's that time of year when attention starts to change in the garden a bit. I'm still harvesting and picking like mad <laughs> every other day but that's gradually coming to an end. There are a couple of big picks still to do. All the beans for drying, the squash, what squash there are, um, the chickpeas, the main crop potatoes, the flint corn, the last of the peppers. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's funny. I was thinking about this the other day. <clears throat> it's when I was chatting, after having chatted to you when I was podding my beans. It gets a bit boring, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I love being in my garden, of course I do. It's always, always a pleasure. But it has got a bit boring in the last couple of weeks. So I guess that's partly why my mind has wandered, my attention has wandered to other things. I think I mentioned it a few videos ago that I am seeing a few bits and bobs of weeds here and there. Not too much, but the whole garden, you know, it does need a bit of a tidy up, but the way I see it, I'll do that when I come to do the beds, when I tuck the beds away for winter. I don't think there's much point in, at the moment of going around and being super tidy when, you know, within another two to four weeks, yeah, by the end of October, most of the beds will have been emptied and tucked up for winter. So all that kind of weeding and that kind of tidy stuff, that can happen then. But I have in the last few days been thinking about some maintenance jobs and some tool jobs and that sort of thing. And it's a great, <clears throat> bye bye Poppy. Oh no, don't, ah, there's not much space there for you Poppy. Um, it's a great time of year to, to start to, as you're in your gardens, as you're walking about, as you're harvesting, whatever it is, as you're sitting there just relaxing and being, it's just to make a note, a mental note of are there things which need repairing? So like my cold frame, I still haven't done anything about it since it got smashed. It's really not been on my agenda. It will be come March, because I'll need it by then. So that's definitely a job over the winter. But, you know, at a much more simple level, things like the shed, getting the shed organized. So I'll show you in a second, but do you remember at the beginning of September, I was mentioning that you know, although we're having these beautiful days, our evenings are getting much cooler, our nighttime temperatures are dropping. So I was mentioning, have your fleeces on standby. And I thought, yes, I'll get my fleeces ready just in case, especially for that little loofah. Um, oh, I haven't looked at that today. I need to go and look at it. Yeah, so I went into my fleece stash and the whole lot had become one great big mouse nest absolutely shredded it was confetti it was white fleece confetti mixed in with a lot of mouse poo pesky cats they're not doing their job poppy you let a mouse in so fortunately i i've got a new piece of fleece so i do have some fleece but yeah it's one of those things isn't it I think we can just, we kind of shut the shed door and <laughs> run away at the end of a session. But it is a good time of year to, you know, have a look at all your tools, do some tool maintenance, do moving parts on your tools need oiling, do your blades, all your bladed edges, do they need sharpening? Gradually, we're going to be using our tools less and less. Uh, there'll be a few which we still have out rake for raking leaves that sort of thing but for the most part a lot of our tools are going to be put away now for probably quite a few months so before you do just say to yourself I'm going to have one day in the garden where I'm just going to give attention to all my tools all my bits and bobs keep everything in good order if we look after our tools they are going to look after us and let's face it they're not cheap tools so 
let's look after them now so they in theory hopefully will last us a lifetime or at least a lifetime of gardening so yeah it's a good time to do that i i need to start out behind the shed because it does become a bit of a dumping ground and um yeah i need to get that sorted that's Previously I've used behind the shed for storing leaves, but this year as I gather them I'm going to strim them down and just get them straight onto the bed So they're not going to be stored for a year For all that rotting down because it <laughs> I did it. I tried it once left them for a whole year They didn't do anything might as well just get them on the beds The other thing I'm going to do today is to sort out the path the communal path between the end of my plot and my neighbor's plot so where my fence and deck are and the beginning of their plot it's a mess you'll see when I show you and I need to get it sorted for two reasons one because when all my bamboo poles come down from the bean frames that's where they're going to be stashed and I don't want to be faffing and fannying and tripping over and da -da. I want to look after those poles because you know they're not cheap I want them to last a long time and the day when I do it, it's going to be such a such a faff anyway, getting all the material cut off them and chopped up for compost and unlashing everything. That's going to take me so long. I don't want at the end of that session to then end up farting around. I was going to say, yeah, farting and fannying around on the back of my fence because it's a mess back there. So that's the job for today. Cheerio, Poppy. But what also led me to think about that is a harvest I'm going to do today which I will show you shortly which I'm a little bit nervous about but I'm quite excited about it too first of all I just want to show you something inside the shed aha so there's the beginning of my finding cardboard and bringing it down to the allotment uh, I will basically be scrounging cardboard two or three times a week I bring it down in little loads like this so that by the end of October I've got a massive stash ready to cover my beds with. But this is what I was talking about, about being neat and organised and having a little shed session. So all my trays, my propagator lids, all my pots, everything's had a bit of a scrub out and is now neatly stashed away ready for next spring. One of the reasons I'm mentioning it is you wouldn't believe it but there are about 500 pots stashed in here. Let me show you if we go in. Yeah. Look at them. Dozens and dozens and dozens. So they're all stacked according to size, which makes sense because if they're all in the same size groups, you get more in. Oh, it's a very pleasing sight, isn't it? Very pleasing sight. So yeah, it's not that I'm necessarily the world's most freakishly neat person or, you know, completely retentive about it. It's just that, you know, the shed's not big, but I cram a lot of stuff in. And I think partly from living in a small home, I've learned to make the most of space. So for example, over in this little corner, everything, I, so obviously this is where you see me chatting to you from, my lovely little day bed oh very comfy i've had some very nice naps on here it's great to have seating in the shed especially if you've got enough seating that you can have friends in the shed you know suddenly there's a shower of rain you can retreat to the shed and have a nice cup of tea but it'd be a waste of space if i didn't use it to store so in here i keep that's the debris netting i use to shade the cold frame oh that's a load of paper to go on the beds but this is where I had my uh, fleeces stashed so that when I came back, when I opened this up, oh my goodness, like I say, it was just a whole load of confetti. Never mind, I have got some more spare, thank goodness. But this is what I mean about if you're, I think this is one of the things I'm most pleased with in the shed when I was kind of designing and planning it. I really, really wanted seating which I've got, but underneath there's a ton of storage. And then of course the onion drying rack, which dries so much more. Um, I've only got a bit of space. This is all lavender on the top. Lentils, more lentils. There's little hooks everywhere. Hook there for my 
bag so I always know where that is because that's got my house keys in actually it doesn't the house keys are in the shed but it's got my other important bits in these need to be threshed these need to come home but yeah it's oh cats honestly it's um it's great if you're fitting out your shed now or if you're just thinking about it if you're getting a new shed keep your eye keep your eyes peeled in skips and oh anything really because pretty much all of the, actually all of this is all just reclaimed junk it's all just out of skits from sort of um salvaged from friends who finished doing building jobs and actually you can fit a ton an absolute ton of stuff in if you just get it planned out in the first place okay well that's enough of the shed let me go and show you the big job that needs doing today right then ah nervous so this is the harvest that got me thinking about the back of the fence too the other day it's the achocha so i tried it for the first time last year and all i got was a mass of foliage absolutely massive it was beautiful it's such a gorgeous green all over the fence last summer not quite so much foliage this year but this year i got fruits which i didn't last year so I haven't got a clue. I've kind of thought about what I am going to cook with them, which I will of course show you. Now, everything I've read about them in terms of eating them is that the young ones, the young green ones, they can be chopped and actually people eat them raw. Salads, I guess. But then the older ones, they get a bit tougher, so they need cooking and what a lot of people well not a lot of people um i think it's peruvian andean is they stuff them but that's a little bit small for stuffing isn't it because i was thinking about that lovely kale and rice and nut mixture that i do but i think they're really too small so i'm going to focus on oh it's got quite a sticky residue coming out i'm going to focus on harvesting the small green ones um and well i'll show you later what i cook with them i'll do that as a completely separate video it's weird isn't it when it, when it's the first time with any veg one of the joys of trying a new veg is is trying new recipes but I don't know why I'm always so nervous. I think I'm not great with change anyway. I'm a bit of a sort of um, I like what I like kind of person. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, I don't think I've ever been particularly adventurous in the kitchen. I like my food. I really like my food, but yeah i definitely would not describe myself as adventurous so i'm kind of i'm doing this a little bit blind as it were like i say because it's a new veg to me i'm not i'm not sure what's the ideal stage to pick them at so let me show you i've got sort of three stages here and then I will report back to you so that for any of you growing. So you see that one's really quite yellow. That one's on its way. And this one is really quite young and green. So, hmm, who knows? Will there be much taste in difference harvesting them at these different stages? Will it be more a difference in texture? Hmm, we'll see. So I think there are a few towards the bottom which I've really left too late in terms of for eating but of course what do we do with any veg that we've left too late to pick yes of course we leave it for seed saving so the plant's very much dying back now you can see there's tons of, sort of drying crispy foliage in there 
but I mean look at this it's still can you make that out it's still putting out and I can see tons and tons more fruit really small ones forming so yeah I'm just going to leave it and see what happens and if nothing else some of those larger older ones they'll be for seed so that's the one in the Hugel culture let's go and have a look at the one that was sown directly into the ground well what sorry I beg your pardon this is in the Hugel culture these seeds were sown direct in June beginning of June the ones behind the Taunton Dean I started those indoors in February uh, let's go and see how they did okay well there's a few to harvest I don't think I don't think they've done quite so well as the ones in the Hugel. But, hmm, actually there's quite a lot to come on here. Let's just have a couple more. I don't want to take too many off because I don't want to make a massive portion of what I'm going to make just in case it's beyond hideous. I don't want to be using up a load of ingredients, other ingredients and wasting them if I hate it. Oh, there's a bit under that. Let me show you. It's trying to grow up into the Taunton Dean. You might not be able to make it out, but this. Oh, oh look, there's a ton of fruit on that as well. Can you see? I'm trying to show you in a way that you can see that. Look at all this fruit. Gorgeous. I think I might need to give that a hand. Because like I say, at the moment, it's... <laughs> trying to grow in the Taunton monster. Look at the size of this beast now. You know, you think I planted that about, oh, nine months ago, and it was just a teeny tiny little cutting. It has been amazing. I absolutely adore the color of its stems. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, we're not here to look at the Taunton Dean, Vivi. Get on with the achocha. It's a nice little harvest. Like I say, I'm not going to go mad picking absolutely loads of them because <laughs> if I hate it. Oh, well, I won't know until I try, will I? <clears throat> but if I like it, oh my goodness, I shall be definitely planting it again next year. I'll probably plant it again next year anyway, to be honest, because it's such a beautiful plant anyway. And seeing as how... I mean, it has been pretty prolific this year. So I'm going to bring you around right into the sun. But there's absolutely loads more fruit on here. And there's fruit coming still. So, yeah, I think it's going to be something that I grow. However, this meal turns out. Oh, gosh, I'm so nervous. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cook it not live um i haven't got the capacity to go live but i'm going to cook it and film it as i do it so i'm not going to have a practice run or anything like that i'm just going to cook it do it taste it live on camera as it were live and um <laughs> i will report back to you right then well this is the don't put it off any longer vivi job this is the communal path between two plots. So with all of these communal paths that are between one plot holder, that's me, and neighbours, we're supposed to, between us, keep it clear. Hmm, their bramble. <laughs> their bramble does not know the meaning of keep it clear. Actually, the bramble, bindweed and nasturtiums all come from their side. They are great neighbours, they're really, really lovely people. I just think this is sort of out of sight, out of mind, uh, which is why they don't really ever attend to it. But that's okay, like I say, they're, they're, they're lovely, lovely neighbours, so I don't have an issue about that, but it just means I need to get stuck in and uh, try and get this lot cleared today. Hmm. Where to start? I think <clears throat> the best place to start is with these brambles because literally every time I try and get up and down here, 
they are trapping me. <laughs> ah. And, oh dear, that mist. Oh, and this silly willow sticks. The thing is as well that there's so much, wow, there's so much bindweed in with them. I'm not even going to try to disentangle them so as to compost brambles. I'm just going to, I'm just going to put it all to be burned. Yeah, I just, I haven't got time for mucking around. <clears throat> It'd be easier if I start at this end, wouldn't it? And then, <clears throat> and then I've got ingress to the path. Oh, I, do, I do loathe bindweed <laughs> and naughty brambles. There's a couple that have shot up. Oh, ow! <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> oh, I'm just fighting rusty away. Yeah, there's a, a couple of bits of shot up in the path. Let me just lower you so you can see. And I think I'm going to have to use the fork a bit. <clears throat> These bits are all runners. How best. Of course, the wood chips are providing a beautiful growing medium for them, aren't they? Obviously there's a load of it still down there, but something is better than nothing. And of course it will slow it down somewhat. Definitely a day for the thick gloves. Oh, yeah. Again, there's still quite a bit down there, but it will certainly certainly slow them down quite a bit. A little bit of grass. Always a bit of grass. Right, let's crack on with this. Gosh, that has taken whew, a stupid amount of time to get cleared. Look at that whole barrow full. It's pretty much all brambles and bindweed. It just goes to show, you know, if you're growing brambles and they're right on the edge of your plot, right on the boundary, just keep an eye on them. You know, maybe before you even build the, um, plant them, build a sort of proper framework to train them onto. Because honestly, <laughs> it's really quite annoying when your clothes get shredded, when your skin gets shredded, when you're tripping over all the time because of someone else's brambles. Anyway, that's my little moan over. This is my next job. I'll tell you what I'm doing with those in a minute because they're absolutely rubbish, annoying rubbish. Uh, but before I do that, let's get that lot over to the burn pile. Oh, did you hear that in the background? That's the little girl who owns Poppy and Rosie calling them in for their breakfast or is it lunchtime by now? Okay, over to the burn pile we go. Oh, it's so great to be able to get down here again. Um, okay, next job, the sticks. So I just want to say before that, these hooks, do you remember I got these hooks? I can't remember if it was last autumn or this spring, but I got them on free cycle. They were such a, a great fix for the solution of storing bean poles. So easy and quick to put up. I mean, it was literally just boom, boom, screw them in. Done, jobs are good and brilliant. So at the moment I've got, there's eight hooks, which means I've got sort of four sets of places to put my bean poles. The great thing about having them up on the hooks is they're up in the air, so they're not on the damp soil. Oh, someone was asking me the other day about the fact that, do I take my bean poles down each winter? Yes, I do. If I leave them in the ground, it's just gonna make them rot more quickly. And as I was saying earlier, they're not cheap. Uh, well, you know, 35, 40p a pole, 
that's cheap but if you're looking for sort of 50 or 100 suddenly it's quite a lot of money so yeah it makes sense to get them out of the ground and then keep them off the ground and on here of course even if they get a bit of rain on them that can just all go through there's plenty of air circulation to dry them out I was thinking I haven't had any materials for it though but I was thinking about putting a baton along the top screwed in with canvas screwed on behind it which I can then just flop over and I could wax the canvas with some beeswax uh, just to give a bit of waterproofing just a bit more protection haven't done that yet maybe I'll get round to it I don't know and talking about getting round to things herein lies the issue with these willow sticks so I got these not last season 2018 the season before I got these in 2017 I think it was 2017 I had a voucher uh, a 20 quid voucher for B&Q which is one of our kind of DIY superstores that also has a garden section and I'd, I'd gone there with my 20 quid voucher specifically to get bean poles. It's getting a bit noisy suddenly. Um, they didn't have any, but they had these and I thought, oh, they're so attractive with that, with that twist of the willow. I thought, well, they're not as tall as I need. They were a bit taller, they were six foot. But I thought, they're lovely. I'll make my tomato teepees from them. Great. But before that summer was even out, they were just so brittle, they were snapping. Let me try and give you an idea. I mean, no pressure, no pressure exerted, S utterly, utterly useless. Pretty, but useless. And, well, you know me by now, <laughs> I'm all about the practical. If I can do practical and make it pretty, I will. But they're rubbish. Now, the thing is, I hate throwing anything away. I can't bear it, it's such a waste. But these are just no good to me for anything someone was saying to me oh why don't you get creative with them you know make something oh if you see I can't even look just in my hand breaking off the fact of the matter is you know I just I haven't got time I haven't got time for being creative at the moment unfortunately well I am creative but with other things so I was mentioning it to Kai uh, and as some of you may know Kai is a photographer art photography she doesn't do weddings and portraits and that kind of stuff art photography I was mentioning it to her and she said oh yes I'll have them please thank you so I'll go and get them over to her I don't know what she's got planned for them I don't know what she'll manage to create with them if she creates something amazing I'm sure I'll be jealous but I'll get some pictures of it for you but then if she decides actually no I've got news for them either they may just end up on the burn pile because honestly I mean I thought about breaking them all down for some sort of insect house <sighs> I haven't got time for that either so yeah this is a lot gonna go and then I've got a nice good clear space for when I start to take down all my bean poles the first thing that's going to come down is going to be the cucumber frame chop chop good I'm glad that job's done only a little job, um, but it's probably taken me about an hour to clear everything. And, but anyway, like I say, good job done. Really easy access now for when I start taking down all my bean poles. Yay, tick. Uh, and like I say, it just makes a nice change to do, oh, I'm sweating now, to do something like that as opposed to picking, picking, picking. Uh, I've got a few more jobs I'd like to do. It's it's just gone lunchtime now, actually. So then I need to get home and uh, see to the produce I've picked this morning. But a couple of little jobs. The do you remember from the last video for seed saving? I picked the little orange cherry tomato. I think I'm going to give that a bit of a prune and a defoliate because the amount of dew that was on the ground this morning, it was really, really quite wet. Uh, likewise, my rose de bain, which I've completely ignored all summer in the, where are they? They're in with the chickpeas and with the coco de pampol. I'll probably have my very last pick of the demi-sec 
cocoa de pampol today the rest will be seed saving so yeah a few other jobs to get on with but the day's cracking on so i need to crack on and other stuff another day but when i was sorting out my beans i found this and i thought oh actually that reminds me to show you because i think it's quite a nifty little tip so these um this white plastic was originally an arch oh, it was ages ago i think it was from somewhere like oh excuse me it's your nose Lidl. as cheap as chips and it really shows the plastic is really brittle just like the willow um and it snapped you can see that oh it snapped completely a couple of years ago and the length of that is just useless for anything but a couple of years before that someone was chucking out a length of hose pipe it was really quite a short length and it had leaks in apparently so it was pretty much good for nothing but I thought oh, it's got to be good for something <laughs> you know I was just saying about I find it really hard to throw anything away so I really hope Kai can turn those willow sticks into something amazing because I can't bear chucking and I couldn't bear seeing this hose pipe so I've got a bag full of um, lengths like this that I, I just cut up and I use them for all sorts of things. I use them for marking the tops of canes, what have you, but it works really well as a joint to hold these two bits of plastic together so that there is still enough there to work to hold a bit of net up. So yeah, never be in a hurry to chuck things away. <laughs> Look at my um, droopy tash. <laughs> Anyway, I need to get on with things, so I'm going to say cheerio to you all for now. I'm sure I'll see you really again, really again, <laughs> again really soon. Uh, actually, I think probably the next time I see you it's going to be October, because this month has whizzed by, absolutely whizzed by. So, for now, please take care of yourselves and each other. I will see you again soon. Cheerio on a gorgeous sunny day. <laughs>